Hello, I'm Philip Bloom and welcome to Brighton Beach. I've never been here before, it's lovely. Beautiful, sunny day. It's like this though, every single day of the year. 24 seven, it's beautiful, love England. I'll talk to you about a series of modules, lessons which are designed to make you a better filmmaker. Cameras are powerful and affordable and everybody's making videos these days, even my mum and dad, but you need education. You need to know not just how to get the best out of your camera, but everything that goes with it. You also need to know how to tell great stories. This course is designed to give you a step up to understand the key principles of filmmaking. This is a course for everyone from beginners to experienced people to improve your skills. Here are some of the many things you'll learn in this series. Camera movement, how to move the camera, when to move it, what gear can help you, when to keep it static. How to film sequences, how to visually tell your story. How to interview people, how to light for interviews. How to record great audio covering all sorts of different situations. How to shoot things at a different speed covering slow motion, super slow motion and time lapse. How to film with drones, how to get that cinematic movement. What is the best way to use this exciting technology? These are just some of the subjects that I'll be covering in this series. first introductory one, I'm going to go over some of the basics you need to look for when buying a camera. But also as a free bonus, I'm going to teach you how to lens whack, a really lovely minimalistic approach to create a really dreamy look. If you're starting out, you have no kit at all, what are the absolute bare essentials that you need? Well, the great thing about Brighton Beach is stuff gets randomly left here all the time and I came across this camera and tripod. This is our bare essentials. Let's start from the bottom. Of course, this is my kit, this is my tripod. I've had this tripod about 10 years. A good, proper video tripod will see you through multiple cameras. That lasts a lot longer. And you also do need a proper fluid head for proper movement. Don't get anything but a proper fluid head. This is a mirrorless camera, whether you get a DSLR mirrorless or a video camera, depends upon your needs and your budget. And a top mic here for NAT sound and B-roll. We'll be covering audio properly in a separate module. Now, of course, this is a lens. This reminds me of my favorite question that I've had over email asking for advice. Philip, I'm gonna buy a 5D Mark II body only. Do I need a lens? Yes. So let's take a look at what the guys are shooting on. Julian has got a proper video camera. Hi, Julian. Uh, I've got a cinema lens. We've got a nice shotgun mic on there. We have a proper EVF, a nice daylight viewable screen. And for my audio, we have a wireless mic receiver. So important, headphones monitor what you're recording. A proper video tripod, of course. Sarah is also on a video camera. She's got a nice telephoto lens to get cutaways, tight shots. We have another little mic on there. We have a video camera, a nice daylight viewable monitor, and of course, a decent tripod as well. Sarah doesn't need headphones because she's not recording audio. And she doesn't really need a video camera for this as such. We could have used the mirrorless or DSLR, but it does match the A camera much more. I'll put this back on. Let me talk about the features that you should be looking for in your camera. What's the biggest difference between a video camera and one of these? Well, this takes stills as well, so if you do need to take photos as well as video, this is gonna be important. This is a full frame camera. Do you need a full frame camera or perhaps you need a smaller sensor? We'll touch on all of these different features throughout the modules. Image quality 
is essential. You can have all of the features which are exactly in your dreams, but unless that image quality is terrific, then what's the point? What the camera records in, the codec is also essential. How well it can be color graded, how well it can withstand really different lights like this, because dynamic range, a camera with great dynamic range should be also very high up in your list. The bit depth, 8-bit, 10-bit, 12-bit, these make a big difference, again, when color grading. Talk about that later on in the series. I love resolution, I love 4K. Do you need that resolution? There's loads of advantages other than just having that extra detail. Again, covered later on in the series. Audio inputs, decent audio. A lot of the DSLRs, especially the early DSLRs, they had absolutely awful audio and it was all about dual system sound. But many of them have proper audio modules. But of course, if you have a video camera, then you automatically have that. That's one of the biggest benefits of having a video camera. Autofocus, does it work? Well, not on these video cameras. This camera does very good autofocus and lots of them are coming out with touchscreen tracking, which is really useful for shooting on gimbals and also for doing interviews where you have nice shallow depth of field. Do you need it? Does the camera you want have it? Is it important? Lens mount, I love a lens mount that's flexible. Something that can take lenses you've already got if you have lenses, because if you have to buy a whole set of lenses, new lenses for your new camera, that cost will add up. One of my favorite new innovations is the five axis stabilized sensor. We have stabilized lenses, but they tend to be more expensive and heavier and also not as fast. So having a stabilized sensor means any lens you put on it can be nice and stable for handheld. Just gonna interrupt my features because you can hear the noise and stuff. This is a little tip when it comes to recording audio in places like this. You need to ideally see what you're hearing. Otherwise it's gonna be really irritating. So that's why Sarah's getting a cutaway right now of that drilling to show what it is. Ideally, you need to see that sound early on. That's a key phrase, see the sound, because it's really annoying. And if we don't establish that, we'll be here all day trying to get this one single take done. Log is a real buzzword. Does your camera need to shoot log? What is log? I'll be covering this a lot more in depth, but we are shooting log. It does give us a better dynamic range, although there are some limitations. Do you cry when you watch? romantic comedies, when you see a film with Ryan Gosling, The Notebook potentially. I don't, but I like a camera that can see in low light. For me, a camera with high sensitivity is one of the most important features because I shoot mostly documentaries and I need to work in a lot of available light. There's lots of other features, how long your batteries last, what memory cards you take, and of course, how much money you've got. Because actually, if you've got like endless amounts of money, it doesn't mean the most expensive camera is the right one for you. Sometimes a much cheaper camera is the right camera for you. Don't worry, that's on purpose. I have detached the lens. What I'm doing right now is something that's called lens whacking or free lensing. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks of how to get some good results. What I love about this, it's one of the simplest and cheapest ways to get a really cool and dreamy look. Julian is being really old fashioned right now with the shooting style. He has his lens attached to the lens mount. Sarah's done the same thing. This is lens whacking. As you can see, if I move the lens around in my hand, I can get some really interesting looks. So how do you get started with this? What is your basic kit that you need? Well, you need a camera and you need a cheap lens. That's pretty much it. Before we get onto the art of lens whacking, you need to understand a little bit about the technical side and how it actually happens. So you need to understand what a flange is. A flange is the distance between the lens mount and the sensor. 
Different camera mounts have different flanges. This is a Canon EF flange, and it's about sort of like, like that. And mirrorless cameras have a much shorter flange. Uh, medium formats have a larger flange. And this is essential to knowing what lens you can whack with. To get really great lens whacking and to have the most options, you need a lens which is designed for a camera that has a larger flange than the camera you're shooting on. This is an old Nikon 35mm lens and using it on this Canon mount, Nikon lenses sit slightly further away than the Canon mount and this gives you a slight gap and this is key to getting the light leaks that we want and the ability to move the lens around. Now you could use a native lens, an EF lens on here for lens whacking but you'll never be able to get infinity. You'll only ever be able to get close focus and macro focus because for the lens to get infinity, it needs to be attached to the actual camera. And we don't want it attached, we need that gap. That's why you need to have a lens which is of a larger flange than the camera itself. So what lenses are ideal for lens whacking? Old lenses are really nice and of course they're nice and cheap, but it's also the focal length. I like 50 millimeters, which is a standard field of view on a full frame. On a crop center camera like this, you're looking at 35 millimeters. This is an old 35 millimeter F2, which is perfect for lens whacking. On this full frame camera, this 50 millimeter Nikon E series F1.8 is great because it's nice and small and nice and light, and it is really cheap. You'll notice on this E mount, I actually have an adapter. This is a E to EF, Canon EF mount, because the flange of a Nikon lens on this means it sits really far away and you're not going to be able to control the amount of light that goes in there. So to solve that, this E to EF, Canon EF, goes on here, converting this into a Canon EF mount. And so again, perfect for a Nikon lens. To get the lens ready, we need to do a couple of things. First off, focus barrel needs to be set to infinity. We do all our focusing, not via the barrel when we're shooting, by moving the lens in and out. And to stop that focus moving, it's a very loose, because it's a very old lens, a little bit of gaffer tape over it. Also, a fast lens like this, F2, is gonna be way too shallow for shooting and lens whacking. So I'm gonna stop it down to about F4, F5.6. Of course, you can change it when you're actually filming, but you control the amount of light coming in via this variable ND. Really important on a bright day like this. This camera will give us okay results. The biggest problem really is you cannot use the viewfinder because this is a DSLR, it's a mirrored camera. This does not work. You have to use a rear screen. Two problems. First off, you can't really see it very well. And secondly, when you are lens whacking, you want to be really part of the shot and you're very separated from it. I'm using electronic viewfinder and I'm much more connected to the shot more stable and I can see what I'm doing. This camera is a five axis stabilized sensor and it works even when the lens isn't attached, it doesn't know what it is. You simply set the focal length in the menu and the results you get are terrific. It just stabilizes it beautifully. This camera doesn't have a stabilized sensor and as you can see, I get these micro vibrations. It doesn't look as good at all. But this is a much older camera. And part of that is the fact I don't have that electronic viewfinder. I'm holding it away, which is reducing my stability. Not just doesn't have a stabilized sensor. This is a problem. What you can do, which will help, is shoot in slow motion. Shooting slow motion will make those vibrations look less pronounced. But the problem is this camera only does 720 slow motion. How you hold the lens and how you shield the amount of light coming in is really important. There's lots of different techniques, but one of the best ones is to simply Hold it with your left hand and use that to shield the top because that's mostly where the light's going to come from. Not the bottom, it's going to come from above you. There's the sun, that's where my light's going to come in and so I'm shielding it with my hand. Right now I have the lens flush against the lens mount. It's very out of focus. There's nothing that's going to be in focus when it's pushed up against this because of that flange. So I have to move it away and as I move it away from the lens mount, I find my focus. And I can pivot it around in my hand and change the focal plane and get some interesting cool effects. The other thing you can do is you can get a macro with this by simply moving the lens away. So I'm gonna crouch down and look at the Canon camera. You can get really close up to objects just with a lot 
of light leaks because it's really detached from the lens. Now you know the principles behind lens whacking, the next thing is to know what works best. What is the best thing to film? Now, just general B-roll shots and landscape doesn't work very well. And getting shots of Julian and Mike and Sarah is quite boring. Part of the reason is I filmed them a lot already. The other reason is they're very static. What you need is to focus on somebody and move around. It's just finding somebody to film. Hello, can I film you? I'm going to shoot 4K 50 frames a second in slow motion, which should give me some really lovely results. And I can do some shots also in HD at 180 frames per second. Too much, to be honest with you, for slow motion, but you can always speed it up. I think 50 frames is a really nice amount. If your camera can do steps, this camera can do steps. Actually, around 96 to 100 frames a second is actually also a really nice frame rate. So we've got some. Um, some backlight, Veronica here. We've got some lovely long shadows. Try to avoid getting my footprints in, so I'm gonna be on here. And very simple direction. Just going to walk along here very slowly, sort of this sort of this sort of pace. And this sort of look out and about, just look very wistful and contemplative. Okay, let's go. I'm just going to pause there and just have a look around, look out to sea. So when your body, get a nice, when you're not walking, get a nice wide-ish stance which can give you a sort of ability to just rock around on your hips. This way you can get some nice floaty motion. If you try and do this while walking, you're going to add some up and down motion. So get a nice wide stance and then just move around like this. So right now, I want to get focus on the pier. Remember, infinity focus is what I've got set on here, and unless you have a lens which can sit further away, I'm never going to be able to get infinity. So I couldn't get this shot with a native lens. So I'm just going to be moving my lens away, so off of Veronica onto the pier till I get my focus. And there it is there. Just, it's very fine. So I'm on the pier right now, and I'm going to Paul, folks, I'm moving the lens away onto Veronica and a transition to white. And walk a little bit towards the sea, not much. So I'm going to tell you when, hold it there. And when I say, off you go, towards the sea, slightly, lovely. So that's lens whacking. As you can see, it's a lovely technique, although something to be used in moderation. That's just one of the many things you're gonna learn throughout this entire series. All of these things are designed to make you a much better filmmaker. Welcome to my filmmaking course.